Hey, so you want to become a best-selling author. Who doesn't? But in order to become a best-selling author, you have to first write and publish your book. So as a best-selling author, I wanted to come and personally share some strategies with you guys that I implemented in my last book launch to be able to become a best-selling author in three categories. It was such an awesome experience, but I feel like I kind of picked my brain and went over and over again about all the things that I could do to get to that point. And now that I'm here, I want to be able to share this information with you. So I'm going to share with you six steps that you can take to become a best-selling author. So the first step is you want to pick a needed topic. A lot of people overlook this. They think about topics that are maybe talked about a lot or maybe a topic that someone threw on them and said it would be a good idea. But when I say pick a needed topic, you really want to understand what it is that your market needs. So if you are really inspired by getting out of debt, but your market doesn't need a perspective of a single mom getting out of debt because there may have been a recent book published on that, then maybe you need to figure out what else your market needs. Maybe your market needs more testimonials or maybe your market needs more, you know, um, tests that turn into testimonies from your personal experience of how you got out of debt. I don't know. That's just an example. But you really want to thoroughly understand what your market needs and you want to pick your topic accordingly. Now, a lot of questions, one of the best questions that I get as I'm working with people is how do I pick the topic that I want to write about? And I love that question because I know I know where the people are when they're asking that question. You're overwhelmed. You have all these ideas, but you don't know where to begin. You don't know what topic to choose out of the you know massive list that you have. So one of the things that I always suggest is I tell people to spend some time Set aside some quiet time, and I want you to reflect on the last 10 years of your life. I want you to think of the hobbies that you have been involved in, the extracurriculars, right? I want you to think of your job, and I want you to think of maybe any businesses or business ventures that you have been involved in. And I want you to write them all down. Don't stop. Don't hold yourself short. And I work with young people, too, who are like, well, my last job was at, like, um, Foot Locker, or I worked at Onion's Pretzels, or whatever. That counts. Because at some point you applied for it. And yeah, you applied for it because you wanted money, right? But you could have applied for any job because you wanted money. You applied for that job over another job because maybe you like tennis shoes or because maybe you like to taste some onions, pretzels. I don't know the reason, but you applied for it for a purpose. So I want you to write down in the last 10 years all of the positions that you've held, the hobbies that you've maintained, the extracurriculars that you've been involved in, and any business ventures that you've had. Once you identify all of those things, I want you to write down all of the things that you liked as well as disliked about each of those. Now, as you're going through this, what you're going to notice is there is going to be some patterns. I know it sounds really weird because you're going to be like, Foot Locker is not related to being a guidance counselor, right? They're two different things. But in some way, they are because they're customer service. They're helping people. They're helping people to be their best or reach their best, right, to some extent. And so maybe that is a part or a component of your job that you adored. But as you're going through all this, I also want you to identify what skills and experience and expertise you have gained from those things. Have you gained punctuality? Have you gained determination? Have you gained um, pushing through trials? Have you gained balancing multiple jobs? Have you gained supporting people? Have you gained empowering people and pushing people to be their best? What have you gained? And then I want you to take that information and I want you to think about how you can apply that to what your market needs. Because a lot of people overlook, but our stories, our things that happen to us in our lives are things that are meant to be shared. They're not meant to be, you know, tucked under a rug because you're a little bit embarrassed or pushed aside because you think it doesn't matter. You would be so surprised how many people would love to hear from you specifically about your take on a specific topic. And so I really want you to figure out what topic that you're going to write about. That is step number one. Step number two is you want to pick a catchy title. Now, this is very important because if you think about it, people are walking by and they're looking at your book and they're going to see, okay, does this is this book talking to me? Is this book, you know, related to me? Like, what about this book do I want? And so I remember when I was writing my first book, Quick Tips for Busy Women. What I wanted to title is it, I wanted to title Quick Tips because I wanted the tips to apply to men, to women, to kids, to moms, to, to everybody, right? But one thing that I learned is if you're talking to everybody, you're actually talking to nobody because that book doesn't specifically speak to an individual. And so I think about it now, like if I was walking through a bookstore and I saw a book titled Quick Tips, 
I would walk right past it. What is that? Quick tips for dog walking, quick tips for hairdressing, quick tips for moms, quick, what it, quick tips for what? And so you really want to make sure that you're making sense of your title and you want to make sure that title speaks directly to that person. The same with your subtitle. You uh, A title is usually shorter and then a subtitle is like a brief statement that kind of um, summarizes what the, what the book is going to what the book is going to be about. And so you want to make sure that subtitle is also very catchy because you want your person to pick this up and say, this book is exactly for me. For example, quick tips for a busy woman. My goal was that women were going to pick this book up and they were going to look at it and say, oh my goodness, this book is exactly what I need. I'm a busy woman and I need quick tips, right? And then I talk about how to get over the, you know, the clutter and the chaos and the confusion. Oh my gosh, I've been so, my life has been so cluttered. I've been so confused. There's so much chaos, right? And now these women are like, this book is directly for me. And that's what you want your book to, to say. Now, the best way that you want to do that, again, is a lot of market research. Um, I talk about this a lot, and a lot of people don't like it, and they feel like, I just want to get down to the nitty-gritty of it, but I promise you it'll save you a ton of time in the end. And so you want to go and you want to understand what it is that your market is looking for, what it is that your market needs. And so you're looking and you're saying, okay, um, what are some of the, the struggles or the skills or the things that my market is looking for that I can provide? And then you want to speak to it. When I was doing my market research, I spoke to a lot of women that wanted to accomplish goals, but they were busy, busy, busy and overwhelmed. Right. And so those are the two constant theme words that I heard. And I knew immediately it was like a light bulb went off. And I'm like, I need to incorporate those words into my title. So now they're catchphrases that are pulling women in. That's really, really important because you want to pull your ideal clients in immediately, simply by the title. The next thing you want to do is you want to think of a strong synopsis. So you want your book to really, the synopsis for those of you that, that, that don't know, is on the back. It's the about, what is this book about? Okay. And the synopsis is, it needs to really go into detail, but briefly, about what it is that these people can look forward to with your book. If you think about it, if you're going to a bookstore, not everyone is going to a bookstore, but even if you're on Amazon, you may see a book, you may look up a title, and you want to look, okay, what's what's this book about? And immediately you're looking at the synopsis. And so your synopsis needs to be strong. It needs to be well written. It needs to have right punctuation. It needs to be edited. It needs to be strong and it needs to be speaking directly to that person. So again, it's reinforcement. So the title reinforced it, the subtitle reinforced it. And now here it is, you have the synopsis and it's like, oh, this book is definitely what I need. So a synopsis that would gather somebody's attention may speak to their pain points. It may say, are you tired of setting goals that you can't reach? Are you tired of having the same things on your vision board year after year because you haven't accomplished those goals? Are you ready to make a difference? Are you ready to quit your job? Are you ready to not be in foreclosure? You want something that's speaking to their pain points. So they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to, I'm ready, I'm ready. And they're, gra they're gravitating towards your book because now you're speaking directly to them. And so again, that synopsis needs to be all inclusive and, and really helping them to know that this book was made perfectly for them because that is a, that is a simple sales strategy. And one of the best ways to become a best-selling author is to sell. Um, bad news for those of you that didn't know that. Um, so then the next thing is you want to find a category for your book. Now, Amazon has a million categories. And just because the length of this video, I'm not going to go through and name thousands of categories, but I'll name like a few. There's like time management and self-help and um, business and money skills. And there's different categories. What you want to do is you want to understand the category that your book is most related to. Now, I'm going to take it a step further as a bonus because I feel like this is really, really important. After you identify what category you think that you are going to put your book into, you want to go to that category and you want to look up the top 10 best-selling books in that category. After you identify those top 10 books, I want you to write down what do those books have in common? What are the strengths of those books? What are the things that those books are missing? What are the things that need to be added? You can take it even a step further because it's, it's given to you. It's easy. It's easy research handed to you. But you can basically look at the comments for each book and see, oh, you know, you're going to see somebody that says this book sucked because it didn't, you know, it didn't do what it said it was going to do. This book sucked because it's 200 pages, but all the information was in the first 50 pages. So I wasted my time. This book was wonderful because it taught me a newfound perspective on overcoming debt. This book was wonderful because the author made it very relatable by sharing per, per, um, personal stories. 
And so once you think like that and you're looking at these comments, now you're able to take that information and incorporate it into your book. How can you share personal stories? How can you make sure that your synopsis matches exactly what's going to be in the book? How can you make sure that you're not overwhelming people with page numbers, but making sure that you still have the right content and you're giving value that people are looking for? So take those comments and apply them to your book. That is really, that's a really big component. And a lot of people overlook that too, because they don't realize that 5,000 books are being published every single day. And so it's easy for your book to just be thrown into the, thrown into the midst of all of these books that are being published and being lost. You need something to make it stand, make it pop, make it stand out. Okay. Um, the next step that you want to take, this is the fifth step, is you want to mark pre-market your book. And so a lot of people assume, okay, I published my book on June 10th. And that's when I'm going to just market it. I'm going to tell everybody it's out. Go buy it today. No, you want to build the hype in advance. So you want to start letting people know in advance. And there's plenty of ways that you can do this. For those of you that are bloggers, you can start blogging about the topic so people are seeing you as experts. For those of you who don't have your own platform or your own hosting domain, you can do it on Facebook. You can start sharing areas of expertise on Facebook and people will start to gravitate towards you because they're like, wow, she's really knowledgeable about parenting or she's really knowledgeable about dog training, whatever it is they're gravitating towards you because they now trust you and they're trusting the information that you're going to give to them and then once you once you like once you're like oh I have this book out now that it doesn't sound so sleazy it doesn't sound so salesy it's like oh I need this information because she's been giving me free information for all along and now she's giving something else with a book I can't even imagine what's going to be in there and so you want people to really gravitate towards you in that way another way that you can pre-launch is you can just kind of get people hyped up. You can say, wow, I'm in the middle of writing this book. Here's a quote from my book. Here's a statement from my book. You'll definitely want to get it. And people like that hype. Think about when movies are produced, right? You don't, movies aren't promoted the day that they come out. It's not Friday night and it's like, hey, this new movie is out. Come see it. No, it's pre-promoted for months or weeks in advance so that you're building the hype. I remember there was a movie with Morris Chestnut. Now I'm obsessed with him. Don't judge me. Um, there was a movie with him, and I remember seeing the preview for it, and I put it in my calendar alert, like, oh, this movie's going to come out. I remember when my life coach published her book, she kept telling us when the release date, when the drop date was coming, and that was in my calendar alert. So I knew when the book was getting ready to come out, I was already ready to buy it. And so you want to get people pre-excited about it, okay? And another strategy that serves is the way that Amazon works is that you need to be the best-selling author for a segment in time. And so for an hour of time, you need to have the most selling books out of that entire category. So let's say you do um, time management. For an hour in time, you need to have the most amount of books sold for time management. And you're going to be competing against some really big people. I remember feeling really discouraged because mine was um, business management time um, and time management skills. And I remember thinking like I was competing against like Brian Tracy. I was competing against people that are really well known. And so I needed to be strategic if I wanted to stand out in those categories. It's very, very, very imperative. And so when you pre when you pre promote, that also gives you the, str the strategy behind it because you can say my book will come out on June 10th at noon. Make sure you buy it. That kind of thing. Right. And now you have everybody ready to buy it at that same exact time. And now that increases the likelihood that now you will be the best seller in that category for that time period. One of the other ways that you can pre-promote is I would I um, did pre-sales. And so I did like a freebie offer where I gave a course away, a free course that was like pre-recorded. And if you signed up for, you know, if you, if you bought my book, I gave you this free course. And so people were already sending money prior to the book being released. And I was, I was t taking that money. And then I, I purchased the books one by one with each person's address that pre-bought the book so that they were able to get that. But it was also within that segment of time to be able to accomplish the goal that I wanted to accomplish. I hope that makes sense. That was kind of a, a whirlwind of words. But that was that's another strategy. You can you can associate something with your book because people like value, people like freebies. So it could be something as simple like if you buy my book, I'll give you a free ebook, and it could be a journal ebook, right? That you can take notes from my book. It could be like if you buy my book, you get a 15-minute call with me to discuss what you how you think you can apply the strategies in the book to your life. It could be um, if you buy my book, you get a free course, those sort of things, because people love freebies. And if you do that, that now helps you promote your book again within that time segment, because you can also lock that time segment down. You can say this offer is only valid at 12 p.m. on June 10th. I don't know why I keep saying that date on June 10th at 12 p.m. 
from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., the offer is valid that if you buy my book, you'll get this free course. If you buy my book, you'll get the free 15-minute strategy session. If you buy my book, you'll get a free ebook. Whatever it is, if you now promote that for that time segment, now you're, again, increasing sales for that time period. So that's a really, really important strategy, and I want you guys to take heed to that because a lot of people overlook that. A lot of people just assume that I'll launch the book or I'll promote the book once it's out. Don't do that. You always want to you want to build the hype prior to the book being out. And then the final step, you're going to be like, wow, this was this is a no brainer. This is really simple. But I have to have to have to say it because if I don't say it, it's going to be overlooked. But you actually have to launch your book. I cannot tell you how many women I run across that have their book written, that have it uploaded on CreateSpace or another um, self-publishing platform, that have the, you know, the editing done, that have the graphics design done, but they never launch it. It is very intimidating and it is very overwhelming that you're sending your baby out into the world. I always say it's, it's birthing your book, right? You're sending your baby, you're sending your love, you're sending this vulnerability out into the world for other people to judge, for other people to read. But it's not an accident that you wrote this book. And so don't hold back those skills and those things that you have in your life that are meant for other people to benefit from. You're blocking blessings by holding those things back. And so I know it sounds simple because you're all on here and you're like, no, I'm ready to publish my book. But there's so many people that get to those final stages and they give up. They give up hope. They get discouraged. They get nervous. They get anxious. And I don't want that to be you. And so it's very important that you actually launch your book. So I'm going to go through the steps one more time, just read through them. Again, you will notice you'll get a companion um, checklist where you'll be able to walk yourself through that as well so that you make you can make sure you are on the right set on the right track to become a best selling author. So of course, the first step is you want to pick a needed topic. You want to make sure your topic is needed. The second step is you want to make sure you pick a catchy title as well as subtitle. The third step is you want to make sure that you have a strong synopsis. The fourth step is you want to make sure that you categorize your book correctly. Another thing I want to bring up about this is you never want to put your book in the wrong category because then it'll really be hard to sell because people are going to those categories looking for things specifically. And if they go to the category about time management and budgeting and they find a dog walking book, you're not going to buy it because those aren't the people that are interested in dog walking. And so you want to be very strategic about picking your category. Um, then the fifth step is to pre-market your book. And then the final and easiest simple step that I could say, but it isn't always the easiest to do, is to make sure you actually launch your book. You can only become a best-selling author if you actually have a book that's out. And so you have to give yourself that opportunity. You have to step outside of your comfort zone where nothing good comes anyway. And you have to give yourself that opportunity to, to make those things happen. So I made this class simply for you because I wanted to, I wish, when I was in your shoes, I wish that somebody had given me a blueprint to become a best-selling author. But through a lot of trial and error, I was struggling with understanding like what it was that would make me become a best-selling author, what it was that I could do to get to that point. What were the steps and strategies? Did I have what it took? Did anybody care about my topic? Did anybody actually want to read what I wrote? And I remember getting discouraged and overwhelmed. And I don't want that from you. One of the things that Brian Tracy says that really stand out to me is that you can either learn from your own mistakes or you can learn from others' mistakes. And obviously, you can learn from your own mistakes, right? But it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of frustration and emotions. Or you can learn from somebody else's mistake where they paved the road before you and now they've given you a blueprint to follow. So here it is. I unveiled all the secrets. I gave you the blueprint to follow. So let me know if you have questions. I am so excited to see you guys on this journey, and I am looking forward to seeing you on the best-selling author side. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful day.